you wanna be at the top? Inshallah. Are we the cream of the crop? Inshallah. You gotta rock till you drop. Inshallah. Cause believers never stop. Yeah. Mashallah. Come on. Assalamu alaikum. As Hamza said, my name is Hussein Abdullah. For the last four years, I played professional football for the Minnesota Vikings. The, the last two years, I was a starter in the NFL, and Alhamdulillah, I was starting to do a lot of good things, and I have had a, a lot of good opportunities coming up individually. Um, but before I go on any further, I have to say I'm a huge fan of Native Dean. As I see you brothers back here, I am a, like, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I know all the songs, my children know all the songs, huge fan. But in, in saying that, I would say it started for me in college. And it, re it really relates to what, what's happening now. And I remember Hamza sent, me and sent, sent it over to me and said, you know, check out this song. And it was a song, Intentions. And we all know that we have to keep our intentions pure. And our intentions always, we have to continuously purify intentions, purify our intentions. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of good things working for me, contractually, as far as becoming an established safety in the NFL, one of the top ranked safeties in the NFL. I had a lot of good things going for me. And then I really had to, I had to sit back and sit, and I said, where's my life going right now? Am I, am I, Am I, what, what are my intentions? Am I chasing, what am, what am I chasing? Am I chasing Jinnah? Am I chasing the dunya? Am I going after money? Am I going after fame? What exactly are my intentions? So I really sat long and hard and I really couldn't figure out what my intentions were. So what I did was I said, you know what? I don't care about anything else in the world. Everything else is being put on hold and I'm going to make Umrah. So this past year in March, uh, myself, Hamza, Abbas, wherever he's at, and our wives, we got to go make Umrah. And it was the, up, up until now in life, it was the best experience I've ever had. You're just, you're just constantly in a, in, a, in a state of worship. And when I came back, we, we, got, we got back into things. We started working out, preparing for a different, um, preparing for the football season. And we're starting to get calls, we're starting to get contract offers, but for one reason or another, I just couldn't commit. I had uh, I had a contract offer from a number of different teams, but we had had a couple of different offers. But for one reason or another, I just I just couldn't commit. And normally, I can say, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it, and I give it my all. I couldn't I could not sign on the dotted line for anybody. So I said, you know what, the law's telling me something. Let me purify my intentions. I need to go make Hodge. This football stuff, it can wait. I need to go make Hodge. So then that's when we decided to go make Hodge. So I had to purify my intentions in life. There's times where we have to purify inten our intentions if we're gonna send a text message, do something on Facebook, like a post, or before we start saying something, or talking about someone behind their back, you have to purify your intentions. I had to purify my intentions about life. And it really helped me going to Omra and then deciding we want to go make Hodge. And then even on this trip, which we said, you know what? Let's just go around and let's just meet Muslims. Let's just go because we were raised in Pomona, California. And there's not a huge Muslim community out there. So we knew it's our, the, the Islam we knew was kind of in that circle. And as we begin to travel, we start to see this is how Islam is. This is how Islam is. So we start going all around and meeting all these beautiful Muslims in all these beautiful places. And it's really helped us out a lot, probably more so than it has anyone else. So, if, if there's anything I would say before we get into the Q&A, it's purify your intentions. This is the best month to purify your intentions. So when you put Allah first, when you purify your intentions as the brother from Native Dean, and Wallahi, I told them when I first met them, that song itself changed my life, purifying my intentions. And I work on it every single day. But as a role model, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us with younger brothers and sisters. Allah blessed us with parents that loved us. Allah blessed us in a Muslim community that loved us. So when I step outside of the house, I don't just represent myself. I represent my family, 
I represent my city, my neighborhood, my religion, my ethnicity, wherever I come from. If I come from the DMV, then I represent the DMV. And it's just always knowing that even in all of that, I have to answer to Allah. He had the pick six return versus quarterback Tom Brady, but even more than that, he consistently showed the ability to play up near the line of scrimmage in the box, much like we saw from Eric Berry last year, but also take a step back, play as a deep safety. You don't always see that. It's like a utility player in baseball. One week he's a DH, and then he can move to shortstop, and then he can go out and play in the outfield. Hussein Abdullah is doing it all for the Chiefs defense and has been fantastic so far this season. Ramadan has been coming in football season for the last nine years. So it started when I was a senior in high school. That was when we first started fasting during the month of Ramadan. And we had night games, so it was, I mean, it was kind of easy to manage. Um, and then you move to college, and now it's a little bit tougher. Higher level of competition, and you're playing day games, 12 o'clock noon in the heat. And then you go to the NFL, now it's a greater level of competition. And now you have a lot more. You have to be physically, and I'm a skinny guy, and I lose weight fast. So for me, it was, I had to get a serious meal plan and the nutritionist helped me out, the weight training staff helped me out, but it really is just a matter of hydration. Um, water, coconut water, alkaline water, Gatorade, Pedialyte, um, eating, eating fruit, eating clean, eating clean food, not eating fried food, fatty foods, uh, you can't just eat snacks or desserts all the time. Um, <laughs> And, <laughs> and just and, and your sleep cycle is very important. Third and four intercepted, coming underneath Hussein Abdullah all the way home. Kansas City touchdown. Mashallah, my my mother may Allah reward her and grant her Jannat al Fadus. Man, she she really worked hard, and you know she. She, she's the reason that we're here today. She, with her dua, you know, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have made it out of Pomona. And my mother, you know, every time something happens, I ask her, did you make dua for us? When we went for Umrah last year, I called her from, from there, probably cost $15 a minute, and I just asked her, did you make dua for us? And she started to cry a little bit, and she just said, Alhamdulillah. So your mother's dua, and I will tell you young brothers and even older brothers, your mother's dua, I, I don't know if there's anything like it. So cherish your mother, cherish your father, cherish your brothers and your sisters and the time that you have here. And ask a lot to grant you good in this life and the good in the hereafter. We want a family reunion in Jannah, and that's the goal. When mom Saida chose homeschooling, and her husband Yusuf encouraged his boys to play football, in part so they'd keep in touch with the larger world. Ooh. Watch through your fingers? No, I, <laughs> I didn't want to watch because of the contact. But then one day when I did turn around, because they said, look at him, he's gone, he's, and he's running, and I saw that it was more strategy. And I would watch Hamza, how he would actually look, what Hussein, they would give him the ball, he'll run from one end of the field to the next. And I, I was like, okay, I like strategy. I'm okay with strategy but I don't like anyone to get hurt. When we were young, our mother taught us uh, something very important. She said, what you want for your brother is what you want for yourself. And it applies in every situation. What you want for your sister is what you want for yourself. If there is only, if there is one plate of food left and I know my brother hasn't eaten, I pass him along that because I want to eat it. Most definitely I want to eat it. I've been fasting too, but I know my brother hasn't eaten. So here, let me pass it to him. And alhamdulillah, when you do that, Allah blesses you with something that's greater. You know, I wanted to go to the NFL, and I wanted my brother to go to the NFL. But alhamdulillah, Allah blessed him to be on the same team for four years. I was on different teams here and there, but to see my brother make it was more, made me more proud than I could ever imagine. And that's why we are here today, just to relay the message. You know, you guys know it, you guys see it, you guys believe it, you guys live it. Alhamdulillah, this is a very welcoming community. Brother Joshua, me and him, or me and uh, or him and us, we continue to interact and we talk on the phone and we exchange emails. And he, he he's just full of energy and he 
tells me about all the great things that you guys have uh, during during this time and during this massage. And I would just say, continue to keep it up. You know, this is a very beautiful mosque. You know, don't ever let it be empty. You know, they always ask, How, is it hard to get to the NFL? You know, what's the secret to success? The, se the secret to success is in your salat. You know, establishing salat in the massage. Having the brotherhood. Your brother, what you want for your brother is what you want for yourself. That's the secret to success. You know, being kind to your sister, being good to your sisters, being good to your mother. Paradise lies at the foot of the mother. So there's no reason for us not to respect our mother, not to wait hand and foot on our mother. When our mother needs something, that we give it to her. Stop Brady and get Jimmy Garoppolo in the game. No back set. Kansas City is a touchdown. After the score, unsportsmanlike conduct going to the ground on the knees. Automatic 15. Kansas City playing zone coverage and Hussein Abdullah collects the third turnover of the night. You know, regardless of where you work at, if I work at Starbucks and I'm messing up on the coffee, I'm probably not going to be there very long. Uh, and the NFL is the exact same. If I don't do my job, then I'll get fired and I'll be on the streets and I'll be looking for work. Most people, they respect you. However you have to come to work, come to work. And then when you come inside, we call it between the white lines. When we come and step between those white lines, as long as I get my job done, it's okay. But they definitely respect you and they, they have questions for you, obviously, because they see you doing, this, doing the certain things and they see you trying to stay away from this and doing this and doing that. They see you getting ready for Juma on Friday. They see you getting all dressed up. They want to know where you're going. So it's mainly about, you know, the Dawa efforts. I think it's not a tough being in the NFL. I think it's an opportunity and an obligation for me is to try and promote Islam as best as I can. And I will say for the sisters, you wearing your hijab is more Dawa than anything me and my brother can do. Anything. You guys are a pillar of strength and a pillar of success. When, I, when we were five years old, me, Hussein, and my twin sister, we used to walk to school every day about 20 minutes to public school, to, a, to kindergarten. We would walk every day, and at the same corner, on Orange Grove in Bangor, this girl, she was in high school, she used to rip my sister's hijab off every single day. Every single day. I'm five years old. I can't do anything to her. She's a monster. She's like six feet tall or something. She's a monster. But you know what? One day I had enough. I made dua and I said, and I broke, there was a TV in the alley in the back. And I broke the magnet in the TV and I took it out. It was, it was about this big. I said, tomorrow I'm going to walk up and I'm going to hit her in the head with this. Because I don't want her to be disrespecting my sister and making, making my sister's life hard. Because obviously my sister was thinking about removing the hijab and this is physical not only mental this is physical torment subhanallah we walked the next day didn't see her the next day didn't see her the next day didn't see her and you can ask my brother what happened to her this sister was sitting at home watching tv one car came through the house a house full of people and killed her and only her her and only her. Why, why, why this story, Hamza? Why? All we have to do is make an effort. That's all we have to do. Be firm in our deen, be strong in our deen. I'm the weakest of the weakest, but when I see my sisters with hijab, it gives me strength. When I see my brothers in the masajid for Fajr prayer, for Isha prayer, it gives me strength. So they say, oh man, look at Hamza, look at Hussein Abdullah. We're feeding off you. When we come to the mosque and we see you in congregation, we see Fajr with three and four and five rows when this is the center. Not the local Starbucks, not Walmart, not the local gym. This is our gym. This is our hangout spot. We, we, don't, we don't really go out and say, you know what? I am going to go give Dawa. It really is just working on yourself, becoming a better person. That is the best Dawa you can give. What will be the purpose of going out and telling somebody you need to be doing this, this, that, and the other, but you have bad manners, or you need to be doing this, this, that, and the other, and you don't respect your parents? I mean, what 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 purpose would that serve? Or you're not you're not going to Fajr prayer, you're not, or you're sleeping in a Fajr prayer, you're not you're not uh, you're not fasting during the month of Ramadan. 
that's that one. If your friend sees you fasting, hey, why are you fasting? Or you guys are at home, you're playing video games or you're doing whatever, and he says, you know what? I have to pray real quick. That's the best form of Tao is working on yourself, being who you are, not, not being two-faced, not saying, okay, I'm about to go hang out with my non-Muslim friends, so this is how I have to act. Be yourself. Because in the Quran it says, save yourself and your family from the fire. So that's, that's our first job to do. Save ourselves and our family from the fire. And the humbly lie, anybody else who we can help out along the way, we will gladly help. This one is, is it true that, that it's haram to, to play for the Cowboys? <laughs> I don't, uh... <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to give any fat fuzz on that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, at your lowest low, whenever you think you've had enough, all you have to do is reach up and say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Because when you think you've had enough, that's just Allah just making sure that you're taking that step towards Him. Because if we take a step towards Him, Allah will come running to us. So why not let us come running towards Allah? And inshallah, with that, I know it's about time to break our fast, and I just want to say Jazakumullah Khaira for everything that our brothers and our sisters of the Adam Center and all the brothers and sisters around the nation, everyone has been so hospitable to us. And please continue to make dua for us. Please keep us in your duas. And regardless of what happens, please love your brother and love your sister. Protect your brother, protect your sister. And remember, want for your brother what you want for yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.